Hi, are you about to take part in an exam which has a speaking part to it? Well, I'd like to give you some strategies to face this uh, speaking part of the exam with lots of confidence because it's really not as difficult as you think it might be if you uh, use some strategies and prepare for it properly. This is Susan Broder from Speak Languages and Travel the World, here to help you improve your English with minimum effort and maximum benefit. Uh, many students are really worried about the speaking part of their exam, and I'd like to teach you how to prepare for it so that you're not going to be worried about it. Uh, the first thing you have to do is to familiarise yourself with the content of the speaking part of the exam. Every uh, exam is different. Some exams want you to speak about yourself, about pictures, uh, to an interact with others. Instead, other exams you have to speak about a topic. So the first most important thing is to familiarise yourself with the exam content. It's very important to surround yourself with the language, and with English in this case, if you're studying English. You have to immerse yourself in the language so that your mind starts switching into English mode and you'll not translate in your head and that will make things much easier. Listen to podcasts, listen to songs, read, watch TV, anything that can interest you. That's the most important thing that you can surround yourself with. Speak, speak, speak speak as much as possible, even to yourself. Actually, speaking to yourself is very good because you've got no one to judge you, you can make mistakes, you won't be worried, and if you set yourself a speaking quota a day, you decide, I've got to speak every time I drive to work, or I've got to speak whilst I'm cooking, or I've got to speak whilst I'm getting dressed, the best would be to find a regular time when you speak to yourself and try and get as much speaking in as possible, even if it's not perfect, just to get the muscles in your mouth going. And the more you speak, the easier it'll come and you won't be shy when you really need to do it for communication or when you really need to do it for an exam. It's very important to use words and expressions that are familiar to you. Don't try and use uh, words or expressions that you've just learnt and that you're not confident with. It's better to use easier language and to speak it fluently and well rather than try to insert complicated expressions which will sound unnatural and therefore it'll make you feel less confident. Another reason for practicing by speaking to yourself is that you'll learn to paraphrase. What happens is that when you're speaking to yourself, of course, you're speaking about anything, and suddenly you'll realize that you don't know the word. Now, instead of stopping and looking it up in a dictionary, the idea is to practice for a situation that could be an exam or when you're communicating with somebody, and uh, try and find a way around the problem. So if you uh, know the word difficult and you can't remember the word easy, why not try and say, well, it's not difficult, it's simple. Or you could paraphrase it and say, I can do it without any problems. So you have to find your way around the word that you don't know. And at the exam, you won't be able to use a dictionary. You won't be able to Google it. And therefore, the best thing is for you to learn to get around words you don't know with other words. And practicing speaking to yourself will give you this necessary practice. Now, if you make a mistake, you're not to worry. Even uh, we native speakers make mistakes. And the important thing is to correct yourself so that the examiner can see you know the correct way to say it. And you mustn't get worried or agitated about it because then you'll make more mistakes. Just correct it, take it in your stride. Now, when you're speaking to to people in English speaking cultures, it's very polite to look people in the eyes. Uh, so you should look them in the eyes also because that way you can see if they understand you and if they look a little confused, you can actually re-explain it so that you have the feeling they've really understood what you're saying. If the examiner has says something which you don't understand, don't hesitate to ask the examiner to repeat it or to explain it again if you haven't understood. You can't carry out a task which you haven't understood. 
it's never a good idea to just give short answers, yes, no, yes I do, no I don't. You should also expand on your answers until the examiner stops you, such as, no, I disagree, uh, in my opinion we should, or I've been living here since I was born, uh, because... So you uh, always try and give a reason or carry on the explanation without just giving a short answer. If you're asked to speak about something of your own choice, I always recommend uh, using something that you're familiar with or that uh, you've had an experience with. And when they sometimes ask you to invent something and you, you don't have any ideas, go back and think of an experience that you've had and then develop the story from there. It's the easiest way to sort of fall back on your own personal experiences. The um, conversation will come out more naturally. When you're nervous you tend to hurry. I recommend speaking slowly and clearly, not exaggeratedly slowly, but make a point of being a little bit slower than you would normally because if you're agitated you'll speak too fast, we won't understand you and also you'll tend to make more mistakes. It's a good idea to practice speaking in front of a mirror. It's also very useful to record yourself because that gives you a sort of formal situation. When you hear it, you'll hear your mistakes, you can improve and do it again in front of the mirror, recording yourself. If you do it about three times, speaking about the same things, by the third time you'll have perfected it. If you're someone who tends to get agitated, practice relaxing before you speak. Take a deep breath. If you take a deep breath, it'll automatically relax you and you'll be able to face the speaking part of the test much more easily. Now, if you follow my speaking strategies, you'll gain confidence because you'll know how to face the exam and therefore, if you practice a lot with these strategies, you won't make too many mistakes. Now, of course, nobody expects you to speak English perfectly, but if you follow these strategies, you'll make fewer mistakes. If you don't know a word, there are many ways in which you can get around the problem. Simplify it. If you don't know the word for paediatrician, you could say a doctor for children. Explain it by saying it's a kind of, it's a sort of. If you don't know how to say pilot, you could say it's a sort of driver for aeroplanes. Describe using relative clauses like who, which, that, when. If you don't remember the word nurse, you could say it's someone who works in a hospital but isn't a doctor. You could describe its use. It's used for. If you don't know the word plug, you could say it's something that's used for connecting to electricity. Use synonyms. If you don't know the word miserable, you could say very sad. Use antonyms, opposite words. If you don't know the word big-headed, you could say not modest. In many exams, you'll be asked to give your opinion. Do so, but always give reasons for your opinion. Now, in natural conversation, people always make sounds to show interest. That's very important. It demonstrates that you're participating in the conversation, listening actively. You could say, hmm... Really? That's amazing. Wow, that's interesting. I can't believe it. Understanding is fundamental, so if you don't understand someone, you could clarify with these expressions. I don't understand. Could you repeat that, please? What do you mean exactly? Can you explain that? I'm not sure what you mean. Or if you want to explain what you mean, you can say, I mean... In other words, in some exams you have to interact with another person and so it's important to know how to make suggestions. Try using these expressions. Would you like to go? Let's go. Why don't we go? Should we go? How about going? Responding to suggestions you can say, OK, that's a good idea. That sounds great. Oh, I'm not sure about that. No, I don't think so. 
I prefer to stay. In these kind of exams, you have to take turns, and it's important that you take turns equally, that you speak about 50% of the time each. You mustn't dominate your partner, but you mustn't let him suffocate you either. You have to speak and encourage them to participate in the conversation and also hold them back and let you finish speaking if they tend to dominate the conversation. You have to find a happy balance. Try using these expressions. Shall I start? Do you want to start? You start. I'll go first. And then if you want to speak a bit longer, give examples. In other words, for example, such as. And when you need to gain time to think, you can use the expressions, well, let me think. So, nonverbal communication is also very, very important. You have to look at the person, smile, or uh, look confused if you don't understand, nod your head when you agree. Just give the impression that you're actively listening. The nonverbal communication is very important on top of the actual words you say, and nonverbal communication tends to emphasize what you're saying. Fluency. Many people want to be fluent. What is more important, being fluent or being accurate? Uh, it's important to speak correctly, obviously, but I know very many people whose grammar is absolutely perfect and they can't say a word. It's better to be fluent making mistakes, so that to communicate, let's say, naturally and not like a robot, but uh, you have to find the happy balance between not making too many mistakes and speaking smoothly. Uh, it's better to speak speak more fluently making mistakes than not to speak at all. If you make a mistake, just correct it and remember that native speakers make mistakes too. Use synonyms. <laughs> now, depending on the kind of exam you have, you'll have different speaking tasks. So it's very important to find out what speaking tasks you will have. That way you can prepare yourself for them effectively. The most uh, common ones always start with talking about yourself. Uh, so you should prepare uh, being able to talk about yourself. These exams usually consist in giving personal information, asking and answering questions about your family, your studies, your hometown, your free time, your job. And depending on the level, they may also ask you to spell a word, which is usually your name or surname. Useful expressions are, for example, where are you from? I'm from uh, Reading, a small town near London, or about 20 kilometers from London. What do you do? I'm a teacher. Have you got any brothers or sisters? No, I'm an only child, or yes, I've got a sister, she's 30 years old, and she's younger than me. What do you do in your free time? Uh, I enjoy skiing, listening to music, I also like going to the cinema, and I usually go once a week. So you could also answer questions like, how do you spend your weekends? What facilities are there in your hometown? These are all things that you have to think of and prepare for. As I said, you should learn to do the spelling of your name and surname. You should also prepare to answer questions on your preferences. For example, tell us about a book you really like. Now remember, don't just answer the questions, but add information. For example, do you enjoy eating out? Yes, I do. I usually go out once a week, together with my best friends. But we don't always eat at the same restaurant, since we like trying all different kinds of food. Use connectors. But, however, even if, because, since, although, and, for example, what do you like doing in your free time? Since inline skating is my passion, I love working out every day together with my teammates. However, we sometimes train on bikes because it relaxes our muscles. Don't forget to show interest in the other person's conversation. Really? That's nice. Oh, that's interesting. I see. Hmm. And always ask follow-up questions when you can. Oh, really? What kind of books do you like reading? Greece? 
Wonderful! Have you ever been to the Sunyon Temple? Remember, ask any partner you may have questions and answer the questions fully. Listen to your partner and show interest in what she or he says and don't memorize the speech. Many exams also request you to describe a picture or a photo, sometimes also to compare and contrast. If you have to describe a picture, I would recommend you follow these strategies. Give a general introduction. This picture shows, this is a picture of, in this picture I can see. Talk about the places. They're driving in the country, in a city, in wherever. I can see a street market, an old building, a square, the mountains, uh, a street, the restaurant, a beach. She's sitting outside the cafe. Describe people's age. He's about 50 years old. She's a teenager, a young child, a middle-aged woman. They're in their 20s. Describe people's clothes. She's wearing a pair of shorts, a red t-shirt. He's wearing uniform. They're wearing quite casual clothes, smart clothes. Describe people's actions. He's sitting at a desk. They're having a meal. She's standing in a queue. Some people are sunbathing and others are swimming in the sea. Describe people's roles in a picture. He's probably a shop assistant. She's a customer. The man serving the drinks is a waiter. This person on the left seems to be a tourist guide. He's pointing to a building. Describe people's feelings in a picture. You can tell they're enjoying themselves because they're smiling. She looks very interested in this activity. She's concentrating very hard. He seems a bit frightened. Maybe this is the first time he's tried this. Paraphrase. Use these phrases to describe words you don't know. It's something you fry food in. A frying pan. It's a cupboard for keeping clothes in. A wardrobe. It's a kind of container for flowers. A vase. Speculate. It might be summer because some people are wearing sunglasses. This picture could be in Northern Europe because of the buildings. It's probably in the country because... Describe position. In the middle of the picture there's a group of people, probably tourists because... There's a bookshelf next to, near, behind, in front of the door. In the background there's a church. Remember... Talk in sentences. Don't say lists of items you can see. Organise your description. Don't repeat yourself. Start with a general description of the picture before going into detail. Give reasons related to the picture for your ideas. Talk about the situation as well as the physical things you can see in the picture. Give some personal feelings about the picture. Listen when your partner describes his or her photo without intervening. Instead, if you have to compare and contrast, I would recommend you don't just describe one and then describe the other. That isn't the objective. The objective is to compare them, first of all, saying, well, while in both pictures I can see people eating, in the first one they're inside in a restaurant, whilst in the second one they're out having a picnic. So here you've compared the fact that they're both doing the same thing, but you've contrasted where they are. You can also see other differences. In the restaurant they are all quite formally addressed, so I presume it's a formal situation, maybe a wedding, a reception or something, whilst in the picture of the picnic they are all very informally dressed, uh, are sitting on the ground around the picnic blanket. So again, you are showing things in common, but showing things which are different. And if you noticed, I speculated, I 
presumed that they were at a formal occasion like a wedding. I could speculate. I think the uh, picnic is a birthday party because I can see a lot of balloons and a cake with candles on the picnic blanket. That would be again speculating, presuming. You can uh, use your feelings. Uh, I think they're happy and also your personal feeling. I would feel much more comfortable on a picnic because I feel very stiff in formal situations like ceremonies. So these are some ideas for comparing and contrasting. Now uh, in some exams you are requested to speak about a particular topic or give a presentation. So in this case I would recommend that if you have a choice you choose something that you're very familiar with uh, or that you know a lot about so you feel more comfortable speaking about the topic. And I usually recommend taking some visuals, some pictures, some photographs or some actual materials so that you can show them and talk about them. You feel more comfortable about it and also the examiner may ask you questions on specific things. It'll be easier for the examiner to ask specific questions on that topic. Start by introducing your presentation. I'd like to talk about, I'm going to talk about Structure your talk. First of all, then, secondly, next, in addition, subsequently, however, on the other hand, finally, lastly, in conclusion. In conclusion, if you have uh, particular exams that you're taking, I would recommend you check out my specific videos. I've made one on the Trinity speaking exam, on the first certificate B2 speaking exam, I mean the speaking part of the exam, on the PET B1 speaking part of the exam, on the IELTS speaking part 2 of the exam. So check out my specific videos for more details on how to face the exam. To recap, I would say that you have to practice speaking to yourself as much as possible in any situation because if you speak to yourself you'll get used to making mistakes and correcting yourself, you'll get used to having to find a solution to the words you don't know and so by the time you get to the exam you'll be so used to it that it'll come quite naturally to you. Then you should absolutely check out what the exam that you're going to take uh, requires so you can practice specifically for it and I would definitely practice and make sure you follow all the strategies I've given you to go and face the exam with maximum confidence. If you follow all these tips and strategies, if you practice a lot and if you speak a lot, you'll have absolutely nothing to worry about. I can guarantee that you'll go to the exam feeling really, really confident. I would like to make some videos on the various topics that usually crop up in uh, exams so you can maybe practice learning some sentences with specific topic language just so that you can string them together depending on what you're going to be speaking about. It's always better to learn chunks of language rather than just vocabulary. So if you can learn sentences with these chunks then it'll all only be a question of putting them together depending on your specific topic. Check out the other videos. Oh and don't forget to subscribe. Bye!